The crew from China's Tiangong Space Station returned to Earth aboard the Shenzhou 21 spacecraft, according to the China Manned Space Agency. Something odd just happened in the orbit, and it caught everyone by surprise. A small mark on China's Shenzhou capsule created worry among technicians, leading to a rushed launch. What really touched that spacecraft? Why did China react so quickly? And what does it mean for the crew living on Tiangong right now? How plans changed in orbit. On the 1st of November 2025, a new crew reached the Tiangong space station on a Shenzhou spacecraft. The new team arrived to take over work from the crew already on the station. The crew who were due to return had been in space for some months. Their names were Chen Dong, Chen Zhongrui, and Wang Jie. They were scheduled to come home on the 5th of November 2025 in their original return capsule. Those on the ground checked every system before the trip back home. They reviewed life support, power, the heat shield, and the parachutes. Cameras and sensors that look for damage were used. During these checks, technicians detected a crack in a small viewing window of the Shenzhou 20 return capsule. It was a small crack. Safety rules say even a small crack can make a capsule unsafe for a crude return. That rule exists because re-entry is the hardest part of a mission. The capsule must face extreme heat and strong pressure. A weak spot can let air leak or let heat damage the inside. For this reason, managers do not take risks with crude returns. When the window failed the checks, leaders had to change plans quickly. The decision was made to use another capsule to bring the crew home. The newly arrived Shenzhou 21 craft was available. They moved quickly to prepare it for an earlier return. The three astronauts moved to the newer capsule and made the final checkup. On the 14th of November 2025, they returned to Earth and landed at the Dongfeng site in Inner Mongolia, and officials reported the crew in good health. Swapping capsules is not simple. Each capsule has its own checks and fittings. Flight controllers on the ground worked with engineers to update the timeline. Medical staff watched the crew for stress and any signs of sickness. Every connection and seal was tested again before re-entry. Leaving the damaged capsule at the station created another problem. The crew that remained at Tiangong then lacked a ready backup for return. Chinese flight rules require a usable return capsule to be available for station crews. To restore that safety margin, leaders prepared an unmanned mission to bring supplies and a spare ship. Hardware for a new uncrewed launch was ready at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Engineers shortened the usual checkout time and prepared a Long March rocket. The uncrewed Shenzhou 22 launched on November 25, 2025. It carried spare parts, testing tools, and fresh supplies. The cargo helped them examine and work on the damaged capsule. This series of moves showed how one small defect forces big actions on the ground. It also showed how they keep a rule that no one returns in a capsule that fails safety checks. The quick steps taken by engineers and flight controllers removed immediate danger for the crew that came home. Even so, the story was not over. More checks and decisions waited. What came next would test repair plans and the limits of current tracking systems. The team on the ground held quick meetings to agree on the steps. Engineers ran more tests on the capsule, while doctors watched the crew. Cameras on the station sent close shots of the window. Pressure sensors inside the cabin were checked every minute. The China Manned Space Agency led the review. Managers worked with teams at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. They looked at three choices, which were to repair in orbit, swap capsules, or send parts up fast. The swap option won within days. That choice showed the value of having spare ships ready on the ground. Still, many questions remained. Could a repair last through re-entry? But as teams searched for answers, one detail emerged so quietly and so dangerously that it changed everything. What were they overlooking? The small crack that stopped the trip. Technicians checked the Shenzhou 20 capsule before its return window. They used cameras, close-up photos, and pressure gauges to inspect the descent module. During these checks, they detected a hairline crack on a small view window. The crack was tiny in size but large in consequence. The China Manned Space Agency said the damage made the capsule unsuitable for a crude return. What does a window do on a return capsule? The small glass near the crew serves three jobs. It provides a view for the crew and for cameras. It helps some instruments see outside. 
Most importantly, it keeps the cabin sealed so air and pressure stay inside. During re-entry, the capsule faces high heat and heavy pressure. Any weak point can lead to a leak or worse damage. Spacecraft windows are built from tough, heat-resistant materials. On many spacecraft, engineers use fused quartz or layered glass that handles high heat. These materials hold up to temperature and pressure better than normal glass. Official Chinese reports did not detail the exact material used on Shenzhou 20. That said, engineers prefer materials that resist heat and that expand little when heated. Those traits lower the chance that a tiny flaw becomes a big break. How can such a crack appear? One likely cause is a small impact from space debris. Space debris includes old rocket parts, broken satellite pieces, and tiny fragments. Some pieces are large and tracked by radar. Many pieces are tiny and hard to see. A small fragment moving at orbital speed can hit with great force. Even a tiny hit can leave a hairline crack. After the crack was seen, engineers ran more tests. They checked the seals around the window. They measured cabin air pressure for any slow loss. They reviewed camera shots from several angles. Flight controllers compared the capsule images to earlier photos to see when the crack began. Engineers also checked space object lists to see if a known piece had passed nearby. Those lists did not show a clear match. That outcome shows small debris can slip past trackers. Repair work in orbit is difficult. Patching a view window must survive high heat later. A simple tape or glue cannot keep out heat and pressure during re-entry. Any repair must hold the seal and resist the heat that builds around the capsule. For that reason, managers judged a quick repair risky without full testing and the right tools. Moving the crew to another capsule solved the immediate danger. The Shenzhou 21 descent module was prepared early for the swap. The crew moved to the fresher capsule after more checks were done. They later returned to Earth safely in Shenzhou 21. Meanwhile, the damaged Shenzhou 20 stayed docked to the station for closer study. The incident shows the limits of current tracking for small fragments. Sensors, cameras, and routine checks kept the crew safe by catching the crack before re-entry. Engineers used all the data they had to weigh the options. They chose the path that reduced risk for the people on board. What happens next to the capsule will depend on deeper inspections using tools and parts sent up by the uncrewed Shenzhou 22 mission. Engineers will decide if a proper repair is possible. If not, the capsule may be prepared for a controlled fall into the Pacific Ocean, so it does not pose a risk to people on the ground. Officials will publish formal results once testing concludes for the public record. But as engineers braced for the next step, a far bigger decision loomed, one that could reshape China's entire mission strategy. What hidden risk forced their hand? What China did next? After the inspection showed the crack, leaders had to act fast, they had to keep the crew safe and the space station secure. The first step was to bring the older crew home. Chen Dong, Chen Zhongrui, and Wang Jie moved into the Shenzhou 21 return capsule. A capsule had to be prepared earlier than planned. They ran extra checks on life support, parachutes, and the heat shield. Medical staff monitored the crew while engineers signed off on systems. The three astronauts returned to Earth safely. They landed at the Dongfong site in Inner Mongolia and were reported to be okay. Bringing them home solved the urgent safety issue. However, the station crew needed a ready return capsule. Rules say a usable return craft must be available at all times. With Shenzhou 20 left docked and unsafe, officials planned an uncrewed mission. Hardware for a new mission was ready at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. A Long March 2F rocket stood by, and the Shenzhou spacecraft was prepared. Engineers shortened the usual checklist to speed up the launch safely. Technicians focused on the most important tests and cross-checked parts. On November 25, 2025, China launched an uncrewed Shenzhou 22 to Tiangong. The mission carried spare seals, testing gear, repair tools, and medical supplies. It also brought fresh food and other items to support the crew on station. The ship reached orbit and docked at the Tianhe Core Module forward port. Controllers watched docking cameras, sensor readings, and telemetry in real time. They followed strict checklists before they opened any hatches or moved cargo. No new astronauts flew with this launch to avoid adding risk. 
the uncrewed flight served two goals. First, it restored a ready return craft. Second, it delivered the tools needed to inspect and possibly repair the damaged capsule. Robotic arms and crew tools would help with close photography and repair trials. Engineers planned to test any fix with sensors to see if it could survive re-entry. If a safe repair was not possible, teams would keep the damaged capsule for study. Later, they might set it on a controlled path to fall into the ocean. The quick unmanned launch showed how the program keeps backup options. The Juquan teams had hardware on standby so they could shorten prep time. Flight controllers, engineers, and medical staff worked together to make it happen. They ran through mission steps in simulations before launch and again after launch. All commands and procedures used clear checklists to limit mistakes. Those on the ground checked tracking and weather for the landing zones. They prepared the recovery team to meet the capsule if a return was needed. Recovery crews practiced landing and medical checks for every mission. At the station, crew members moved some experiments to the new capsule as a precaution. They labeled tools and locked down items to prevent loose objects during docking and transferring work. Engineers used pressure cycle tests to see how the repaired seals might behave under stress. They recorded all readings and compared them to safe limits. Officials from the China Manned Space Agency briefed leaders at the Juquanan Center and the Beijing Control Room. The move also highlighted the cost and complexity of crew safety. A small defect forced an extra launch, extra checks, and more planning. It used fuel, time, and money, but it avoided sending people into danger. What the teams did next will change how the program handles similar events. Wait until the next part to learn why small debris in orbit is becoming a bigger problem for all stations and crews. But as engineers traced the floor back to its source, one detail emerged that no one expected. What was hiding in orbit? Why this matters? Debris and safety. Space around Earth has many objects. Some are working satellites. Many are old rocket parts. Some are tiny pieces from past collisions. Together, they make a busy zone called low Earth orbit. Even small pieces can move very fast. When a small piece hits a spacecraft, it can punch a hole or make a crack. Capsules and stations use shields, layers, and strong parts to protect against hits. Windows and seals get extra attention because they keep air inside. If a seal or a window is damaged, the cabin can lose pressure. Losing pressure in orbit is dangerous for people. That is why engineers test every part before a return. Radar and telescopes track many objects in space. They share data with other centers so that specialists can watch for big threats. If a large piece comes close, the station can move away. Small fragments are harder to track. They are often too tiny for radar. They can still do damage because their speed is very high. Design and testing aim to stop small hits from becoming big problems. Engineers use tough materials that resist heat and pressure. They build systems with backups. For example, if one sensor stops working, another can take over. They run many checks on seals, parachutes, and heat shields before allowing a crude return. When damage is detected, they follow strict steps. They check pressure readings. They take close-up photos. They test seals with small pressure changes. Medical staff watch the crew for any sign of trouble. If a key part fails the test, the capsule is not allowed to carry people back to Earth. Here, the Shenzhou 20 event showed how these rules work. A tiny crack in a small window stopped a planned return. The decision required moving the crew to another capsule. It also led to an uncrewed flight that carried tools and spare parts. These actions took time and cost money, but they kept people safe. Many groups work to improve tracking and remove large junk from orbit. Some people test nets, robotic arms, or controlled burns to push dead satellites down. Other people build more sensors and cameras to spot small pieces earlier. Better tracking helps everyone who uses space. A key point is that risk comes from both big and small objects. Big objects are easier to see and avoid. Tiny pieces are hard to spot, but still harmful. That reality is making space agencies plan for more checks and more spare ships. The need to act quickly after a small hit is now part of every mission plan. Debris can come from many sources. Old rocket stages break apart. Satellites collide and shatter. Even a flake of paint can become a fast, small object. 
agencies around the world share tracking data to warn each other. China, the United States and other nations send data to centers. That sharing helps plan safe moves. Recovery teams train for every landing. They plan for weather, terrain and medical checks. Insurance plans cover extra flights or repairs. All of this raises the cost of space work, but keeps crews safe. But with so much debris drifting unchecked, what crucial clue did China uncover that could change everything about the investigation ahead? What comes next for Tiangong and China? So what happens next? After all this drama in the orbit, the big question is the one everyone wants answered. How will China deal with this damage? And what will the next move look like? Let me break it down for you. The priority for the team at the China Manned Space Agency is to study every part of the damaged Shenzhou 20 capsule. They already have close-up pictures from the astronauts on board. They also have images sent from the uncrewed Shenzhou 22, which brought fresh tools, sensors, and a small inspection kit. These images allow engineers to zoom in on the mark around the window and check if the outer layer peeled, chipped, or cracked. Why is this important? Because one small change in that outer layer can tell them what kind of object hit the capsule. Next, engineers on the ground run pressure tests using the live data from the capsule. They watch how the cabin pressure changes over time. If the pressure stays stable for many hours, it means the damage did not open a path for air to leak out. If the pressure dips even a little, they know they must prepare for an early crew return. This is not guesswork. They compare the numbers with old tests from past flights, so they know what a healthy capsule should look like. The China Manned Space Agency is also working with tracking stations in different parts of China. These stations scan the region of space around the Tiangong station and search for tiny pieces of debris. Many people think space debris means large objects, but the small pieces are the dangerous ones. A piece as small as a grain of rice can leave a mark on a spacecraft window because of the high speed in orbit. Tracking these tiny pieces is hard, so they check radar records from the hours before the hit to see if anything passed close. Now, here is the part that might surprise you. China planned for situations like this years ago. The space agency keeps a spare capsule ready for launch. This is not only for rescue missions, it also helps when a crew needs an early ride home. Shenzhou 22 being pushed out early was a sign of how serious the inspection is. It shows they do not want to take chances with the crew. But the future plans go even deeper. Engineers are now talking about adding extra shielding to future windows. There is also talk of sending up a new module with stronger outer panels made to resist micro debris. China also wants better tracking support and may work with foreign tracking centers to increase warning time. Nothing official has been announced, but the move would help every country with astronauts in orbit. So what will be the final call? Will the crew stay until the end of their mission, or will China bring them home early for safety? That answer is coming soon, but the next update might change everything. So stay with us, because the story is far from over. Thanks for watching. The story of Shenzhou 20 is more than a damaged capsule. It's a warning about the future of spaceflight. As China races to uncover the truth, one decision could shape every mission that follows. If you want to stay ahead of the next update, hit subscribe, tap the notification bell, and join me when the real answers finally surface.